Hey everybody, and welcome to this, my first video, my only video on the Sony Cybershot DSCW650, a little 16.1 megapixel point and shoot digital camera with a very nice Carl Zeiss Vario Tessar lens. This is, like I said, a digital point and shoot camera with a 16.1 megapixel CMOS sensor. There is a continuous frame, uh, continuous shooting mode, but I couldn't find the frame rate listed for it, as well as single shot mode. The ISO range on this camera is 80 to 3200, as well as auto, and it will take movies at 720p. Shutter speeds on this camera are controlled automatically, and I couldn't find out what they were fastest and slowest. This camera was targeted at the entry-level market. It has no manual controls at all, only auto, program, scene, and effects modes. It also does not take RAW files, only JPEGs. Most of the specs on this camera in the manual and online information aren't given in standard format, indicating that this is intended for a, an audience that does not have a great understanding of photo, uh, photographic technical details. This has a very intimidating manual, however, for how easy this camera is to use. So if you're new to photography and looking at this camera, don't let the manual deter you from using this camera because it is very simple. Most functions on this camera are accessed through the menu system, and that's intended, basically the menus are intended for you to set them up once and not really go into them all that often. So this was made by Sony, in China in 2012. It was preceded probably by the W550 and it was concurrent with the W600 series, which was the 610 to 690 and multiple DSLR and mirrorless cameras by Sony. And it was followed by likely nothing. In 2013, Sony pared down their point and shoot line to two models, the 710 and the 730. So as we do, let's go over the camera's features and functions here. On the top, we have the microphone, the power button, and the shutter release button. On the front, we have the camera's flash, the self-timer and smile light, the uh, lens, yes. Oh, and that's also the autofocus assist light right there. This little round light does quite a few different things. Uh, being indicating the self timer when people should smile and also helping with your autofocus assist on the camera's back we have a very large lcd the zoom button up here telephoto and wide we have the self timer switch right here or the mode switch rather which is camera panoramic and video right there play button, display, flash, uh, smile button, and uh, self-timer button right here. And then in the center, that's the set or the con confirm button. Menu, and then trash and help button right there. On this side, we have the strap lug. On this side, we have nothing. On the camera's bottom, we have the battery chamber right here, which also holds the memory card. We have a micro, a mini USB, mini or micro? Um, micro USB port, tripod socket. The camera speaker is down here, those three little dots right there. And then the serial number and certification info are right here as well. So this camera can do nothing whatsoever without a battery. So let's change that. To open the battery chamber, you simply slide this lock back and it pops open. Then to pull the battery out, there's a little blue switch over here on the side, and you pull it out, and this uses an NB, I'm sorry, NPBN1, 3.7 volt, 1500 milliamp hour battery. Looks basically like this, very tiny. And so to put the new battery in, you simply look for the arrow on whichever battery you're using, slide it in, and you have changed the battery. And the battery just uses a little wall charger to charge like that. It is a rechargeable battery. To change the memory card, which this camera uses memory stick duos and SD cards, 
We're going to go back into the battery chamber, going to push down on the memory card if there is one in there. There we go. Slide out the memory card, and I have a Memory Stick Pro Duo in there. And then just slide it right back in like that. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Just slide it on in. There we go. And that's how we change the memory card. For flash use, it is built into the camera and it will fire when it needs to. So we've gotten to this part of the video faster than I ever have in any other camera. Let's take a picture with this camera. First thing you gotta do is turn it on. Then what you're gonna do is you're going to either zoom in or zoom out as needed to frame the image as you need. And you can see here, if we zoom all the way out, that's what the zoom looks like, and that's what it looks like on the wide end. And then you just, nope, that was the power button. Turn it back on here. Once you've framed your image, just gonna take a picture. And I guess even though I'm pointing this at the studio lights, it felt like it needed to use the flash. There we go. Oop. And that's how you take a picture with a camera. That's it. Next, let's go through the menu system, however, uh, hoping that there's enough battery power to get through this. So let's hit the menu button. And we'll go up to the top. Here we go. So these are your shooting modes. They include intelligent auto, program mode, picture effect, and your scene modes. So this is intelligent auto, where the camera literally will control everything. You have no input into how the images are gonna turn out. The camera decides it all. This is program mode, where the camera controls almost everything. Uh, I believe, I don't know, honestly, in this camera, I'm not sure how these are functionally different. Um, I believe that the intelligent auto can pick a scene mode if it needs to. That, I think, is the difference. These are your picture effects, and these have some filters that can be applied to images. Uh, they include toy, pop, part, and soft focus high key. Strongly recommend not doing these because you can uh, do better in post with your uh, with your own editing software or just whatever app you're uploading with. So here are the different options you have with your uh, picture effects. Next we have our scene modes which include soft skin, soft snap, which soft snap is a shallow depth of field. Soft skin is designed to soften people's skin. Landscape, which gives you a deep depth of field and will work best with a wide, the wide angle setting on your lens. Night portraits, which gives you a nice long exposure but also a flash so that you can illuminate the person you're taking a picture of as well as whatever dark cityscape or landscape is behind them. Night scene, which is like landscape but at night. High ISO, which is good for, in, for dark areas where flashes are prohibited like plays and museums. Gourmet, which is for food, and it will make food look more appetizing when you photograph it. Beaches, for use on the beach, which will help uh, compensate the exposure for the added light and sun reflection off of water on beaches. Snow, which is used for snow, because uh, snow really increases the amount of light. And then fireworks, which will give you a nice long exposure that you can use to capture that blurry, flowery look of fireworks. That's that. Here we have your easy mode. This turns on easy mode, and that will hide most of the camera's options from you if you want to use easy mode. We're gonna leave it off so that we can see most of the camera's functions. Next, we have your still image size, and this adjusts your still image size and aspect ratio. So you have a bunch of different options here. These two are 16 by nine, which is standard computer screen layout size. And these are four by three, which is standard image size. And they range from 16 megapixels down to, to VGA. 
These are 12 megapixels and 2 megapixels. Next we have your drive mode, which are single and continuous shooting. With single, you press the shutter button once, it will take one picture. With continue, you hold the shutter button down and it will keep taking pictures. Here we have your EV compensation, which allows you to basically make your scene brighter and darker. You can intentionally overexpose or underexpose. In general, just leave that at zero and let the camera tr uh, do its thing unless you are intending to over and underexpose to capture a series of images for HDR or to create a low key or high key image. Next we have scene recording. And basically what this does, auto will give you the best shutter speed. The, and auto and uh, scene recording plus gives you a second shot. Auto shoot one more shot in night scene or backlight basically gives you a second shot as a safety shot. Here we have smile detection and the amount of smiling needed to get a smile, to, to trigger the smile detection. And basically what this does is when somebody smiles, the trigger, the shutter will automatically fire. So if you wanted to do a selfie, this would be the way to do it. Here we have your face detection off, automatic, uh, focus, with priority on children's faces and focus with a priority on, on, on adults' faces. Here we have your in-camera guide, which will help you uh, give you tips, these little tips right here specifically, for how to use the camera. We're going to enter the settings menu right now. So here we have your autofocus illumination auto and off. This is the light that we talked about on the front of the camera. Grid lines, this are, these are grids on your viewfinder to help you line up your scene and keep the horizon and the verticals straight on or off, just a matter of personal preference, what you want to see. Display resolution, this is mostly a function of battery preservation. Uh, the high resolution is going to use more battery than the standard. Daylight zoom, oops, sorry, digital zoom. <laughs> so digital zoom will give you more zoom than the lens's optical zoom, but it will do so at the cost of image quality. So leave this to off. Uh, use your whole sensor, don't, don't use the digital zoom. It's gonna reduce your image quality significantly. Red eye reduction, automatic, this or off or on. Basically, this is whether or not the flash will pulse before a photo is taken. If the camera detects a person in front of it uh, with auto, always with on, never with off, to help reduce red eye. Blink alert, auto or off. Basically, this prevents the camera from taking a photo when somebody's blinking. And write date, off or on. That is whether or not the date will be written on the actual image. It's stored in the EXIF data. You don't need to have it on the image unless you're doing something for forensic or documentation purposes for uh, legal stuff. Here we have some of the, some more, uh, this is your main settings. Beep is on, off, or with a shutter. That's basically how much noise you want your camera to make. Panel brightness is the LCD here and how bright you want it to be. Very bright, very dark, or in the middle. Language setting, which language you want the camera to use. Display color, which display you would like it to be. You have three choices, dark mode, bright mode, and pink mode. Demo mode, off or on, just leave this to off because demo mode will go into some demonstrations about how to use the camera. Initialize, basically, this is going to reset your camera to default settings. Function group, uh, function guide, this is on or off. This is a help guide that helps you understand what the different functions are. Video out, NTSC or PAL, this is um, for the uh, video recording codec. Just leave that to NTSC. Unless you're in a country that uses PAL, then leave it on PAL. Eco mode, off, standard, or max. And I believe that this is how long 
the camera goes before it automatically shuts off. Could be wrong about that. I don't have this in my notes. USB connection setting, mass storage, or PTP. Honestly, the USB in this is, as of this video is recording, seven or eight years old. Just leave this to mass storage. It doesn't matter. You should be taking the memory card out of your camera anyway and transferring the files to your computer. That way, it, it will be a lot faster. LUN setting, multi or signal, single. I am not sure what this does. Um, quite honestly, I don't have this in my notes either. Download music. Uh, you can download some music. Empty music. You could empty all of the music on your SD card. Memory card tools here. This is format. You can format your memory card. Create a recording folder. Change your recording folder or delete your recording folder. This will allow you to create, change, create a new folder, change which folder you're saving to, or delete folders that are on your memory card. You can copy all of your images from internal memory to your memory card that way. And this is your file numbering setting, whether you want to have it in a series or have it reset each time it goes into a different memory card. Leave it in series. That's a better way to preserve your files on your computer and prevent them from being overwritten. Clock settings. This is all date and time stuff. What area you are in, whether you're at your home, and then you have a bunch of different general settings you can pick from here your destination, where you're going to be traveling to, and then the date and time right here. And that's that. Those are the menus. If we hit the display button, we can change some of the display information here. Flash button allows us to change the flash type, whether it's going to be auto or off, for instance. So the smile detection button allows us to adjust the oops allows us to uh, adjust the smile sensitivity. I'm not quite sure how it's. And then down here on the self, the self timer button, there we go. The self timer, we can choose 10 seconds, two seconds, uh, until one person is in, shoots two seconds after spotting a person in front of the camera. Oh, come on. Or shoots two seconds after spotting multiple people in front of the camera. So this is only this this right here will only adjust the self timer. We use this switch, we sw and we can swip, change to panorama mode. And what you do with panoramas is just slowly and gently move side to side, and the camera will record a panorama. Or you can switch to video mode to record videos. And that is it. Everything to go over on the Sony DSCW650. A fun little, very light, very small, very easy to carry point and shoot camera that's perfect for just keeping on you all the time because it takes up almost no space. And with a good Zeiss lens and a decent number of megapixels, can still take very good photos. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.